Good evening and a very warm welcome to Radio and Television Tonga News Package for the hour. Making headlines, a by-election for Tongatapu 4, 6 and 7 constituency to be held on the 3rd of November this year. Prime Minister officially opens this morning the National Consultation for Transforming Education Summit. And more than 7,000 Tongan people have been repatriated back to Tonga since the border closure in 2020. Now for the stories in detail. The Lord Speaker of Parliament, Lord Fafanua, today issued to the Electoral Commission a writ of election for a by-election to elect parliamentary representatives of the people for three electoral constituencies in Tongatapu, namely Tongatapu 4, Tongatapu 6 and Tongatapu 7. The by-elections are called due to vacant parliamentary seats for the respective electoral constituencies following the unseating of their representatives by the Legislative Assembly on August 10, 2022. The representatives were the Tafu Tomomoyaki for Tongatapu 4, Poasi Mataele Tei for Tongatapu 6, and Sione Sengsta Saulala for Tongatapu 7. The unseating is required by the Electoral Act and follows the election petition related to the Court of Appeal judgments that were released on August 9th, confirming that the election of the respective representatives in the general election of 18th of November last year was void. The date for the by-elections to elected representatives for the people of Tongatapu 4, 6 and 7 was confirmed today for Thursday the 3rd of November this year after a consultation between the Lord Speaker of Parliament and the Chairman of the Electoral Commission, the Right Honourable Lord Dalketi, as required by the Legislative Assembly Act. The Honourable Prime Minister, who is also the Education Minister, Huakava Meiliku, officially opened the National Consultation Transforming Education Summit this morning aiming to post efforts in ensuring that all children are able to access quality education in Tonga. Mark Ake tells you more. The Education Minister, Honorable Huagav Meiriku, elaborated that as Tonga tries to recover from recent natural disasters, the impacts of COVID-19 on education and learning, they must ensure that the education system can meet the long-term aspirations of youth. The National Transformation Education Summit provides opportunities to reimagine education and create a shared vision. Tonga, we are moving towards a common vision for education, uh, transforming together with the rest of the world. At this front, we should be very clear what transformation is about. It's not about feeling kept. It's not about tweaking. It's not about selecting one or two big issues. It's not about more of the same, or even better, or even faster. And we also know to a large extent what it is about. Transformation is about repurposing education or rethinking or reimagining re education and what and how of learning. It is about adopting new policies, practices, approaches and governance system to ensure that education equips every learner with the skills, knowledge and values that will allow them to thrive. It is doing this each in our own context, supported by partners and contributing to a better future for us all. With the high cost of recovery and rebuilding following the Hunga Tonga, Hunga Hapai, and the COVID-19 pandemic, we should embrace innovation, allow ourselves to leapfrog our development, and lay foundation for transformation of up to 2030 and beyond. For that to happen, we need to take stock of where we are in terms of our learning, given the disruption of COVID-19. We need to collect lessons learned, especially about difficulties in access and quality of education, especially during the crisis. We need to look at how to address these difficulties and how to transform education to address these challenges, and also to achieve what we imagine education should be. This is where innovation, learning from others, and opportunity for leapfrogging play key roles in transforming education. During the program, the Prime Minister also presented 382 laptops to form six and seven students from both government and non-government schools to ensure they're able to access the internet for their studies. This assistance was donated by the farmer's company from New Zealand. Huagawa Miriku also announced the grants of 2,000 laptops assistance for all schools in Tonga that will arrive in the kingdom by the end of this month. 50% of this grant was paid for by the government and the remainder was paid for by the students. There are two types of laptops, one worth 1,400 and another worth 1,000 
600 per hour. While the Ministry of Health works to identify whether BA4 or BA5 subvariants are spreading in communities within Tonga, the Ministry continues to urge the public to get vaccinated. The Health Director, Dr. Siale Akau Ola, said there is a concern since the BA4 and 5 subvariants spread much quicker compared to BA1 and BA2 variants, which have been already recorded in Tonga. People who have contracted the COVID-19 or have contracted the COVID-19 before can still get the BA4 and BA5 sub-variants. Dr. Akaola explains that BA4 and 5 is, is much more severe to those who are unvaccinated and those who are 50 and older. This is why the ministry is pushing people to get vaccinated in time so they may have antibodies to protect them from the virus. Meanwhile, during a media press conference this afternoon, Health Minister says more than 200 new cases recorded as of today. The Ministry of Health has recorded more than 7,000 Tongan repatriates arriving back in the kingdom since the border closure in 2020 due to the pandemic COVID-19. This was revealed by the Health Minister Dr. Saia Bukala during the whole House Committee's deliberation yesterday. Mark Ake with more on that story. The Health Minister, Honorable Dr. Saia Bukala, presented the annual reports of the Ministry of Health 2020-2021. It showed the preparation of the ministry for times when COVID-19 reached our shores. This includes the renovation of the Mua Health Center and Taliai Camp for passengers who tested positive for COVID. Dr. Pukala explained that Tonga should be more cautious with the reopening of our borders as the Ministry of Health believes that there will be a second wave of COVID-19 and it will be worse. He also urges the public to continue to comply with the COVID-19 precautions as it is the only way to mitigate COVID-19 in the country. However, there were other issues during Parliament deliberations, but the whole House committee called a break without the Health Ministry annual reports 2020 to 2021 being approved. And Tonga Police recognizes the efforts of its Personal Protection Officers or PPO in alliance with special agents from the United States Diplomatic Security Service in assisting the United States dignity. Deputy Secretary of State, Her Excellency Miss Wendy Sherman, in her official visit to the Kingdom of Tonga last week. Mark Aki again with the detail. Deputy Secretary of State, Her Excellency Wendy Sherman, is the most senior official to have visited Tonga, and her visit commemorates 50 years of diplomatic relations between the two countries. Upon her arrival at the former International Airport last Friday, she and her delegation were assisted by Tonga Police PPO to the former Domestic Airport, where they boarded a flight to Ewa for a royal audience with His Majesty King Tupo VI at the Hilala Tangtangi Royal Palace. The PPO successfully carried out their duty throughout the two-day visit. The Tonga Police Band was also acknowledged for their important role in providing the main entertainment during the Government of Tonga's official reception hosted by Honorable Prime Minister Hoka Meiliku at the Taufaha Wharf on Friday evening. Tonga Police in a statement said that they value its stakeholder relationships and the recent visit by the U.S. Deputy Secretary of State provided the opportunity for Tonga Police to strengthen its relationship with the U.S. Diplomatic Security Service. Her Excellency's visit was an opportunity for Tonga to discuss the U.S. interests in establishing an embassy in Tonga and learn more about the ongoing recovery efforts from the January volcanic eruption and tsunami for which the U.S. government provided over 2.6 million U.S. dollars in aid to Tonga. That wraps up this evening's news package, but before we part, here's one final look at today's top stories. A by-election for Tonga Tapu 4, 6 and 7 constituencies to be held on November the 3rd. Prime Minister officially opens the National Consultation for Transforming Education Summit this morning. And more than 7,000 Tongan people have been repatriated back to Tonga since the border closure in 2020. And that's it for tonight. Thank you for your company. I'm Bafanatu Bola. Good evening.